This is large two-piece knife edge. This is a piece that Moore worked on over the years through the 60s. It worked on many themes that Moore was doing at the time, organic objects. There were pieces that were enlarged from flints and, and bits and bones. So you've got sort of the sharp edges of the, of the bone, sort of cut bones. Now this, this piece is about two and three quarter tons of, of bronze. It's not massive, you know, it's hollow, um, but it's a fair weight. Citing this, this work in such a prominent spot for Moore was hugely important as it was having major pieces or any of his work in major sites around Britain uh, and especially London. It was about making the almost unapproachable work approachable for the public and there's no more approachable place than outside the Houses of Parliament. It's for him was hugely important. The statue was gifted to the nation. The minister um, at the time accepted it on behalf of the nation, the donation, and um, it was installed. And the maintenance instructions were to wash it occasionally with fairy snow, that's in the file. Um, but unfortunately, over time, the Depart Ministry of Works changed and of course became partially the Department of Environment. Responsibility just disappeared, really. And so the sculpture sat here, but nobody really cared for it at all as this um, became known really um, as the most damaged, the most badly presented sculpture in central London. <laughs> it's pretty horrendous actually. I mean, we're now looking at a surface which is two-thirds green, it's naturally oxidised, but there's graffiti over the entire surface. You know, Moore put in his own texture, we've now got, you know, other people putting in their own texture. Um, it's lost that beautiful gold quality that it had, the subtlety of um, the shading in there. All of that has been lost because it's naturally done what it wanted to do itself. The lacquer itself has broken down, it's peeled. I've not seen one quite this bad for a very long time actually. Eventually, um, Frank Doran MP, who chairs the Speaker's Advisory Committee on Works of Art in the House of Commons, laid a question to the Minister for DCMS asking who was going to care for this statue. And the Minister replied that would the House of Commons be willing to take on ownership of the sculpture and take on its care. And we were delighted when the House of Commons agreed to do that and it entered the Works of Art collection, which means that we can now care for this sculpture. To conserve a piece like this, we basically have to get back to the bare metal. Unfortunately, because of the damage that has been done to the surface, it's not something that you can do selectively. Bronze being what it is, it's started to corrode, turning darker browns, going through to green. So as now, it's got a very almost camouflage appearance to the surface, where it should be uh, quite an even, rich, golden yellow honey colour. There's slight variations into the textured surfaces. There's more, was very sensitive about the, uh, the surface coatings of his uh, sculptures. He not only was interested in the form, he was actually interested in the colour. And the colour on this one has gone completely. Our approach would be to remove all the protective coatings, well, what's left of them, uh, remove the wax, remove the lacquer, and get back to the what remnants there are of the original patina on the surface. As you can see, the surface of the uh, bronze has got all this graffiti, which as you, it's not done with a green pen. Uh, what has happened here is people have scratched their names into the surface. This has act actually gone through the lacquer, and we're getting preferential corrosion. This is copper corrosion here. The processes for cleaning the sculpture, initially we will remove the wax. That's removed with a steam cleaner. The wax is this dark area here, which has got the black colouring in it. Uh, the steam cleaner will remove all of that. Then once that's actually gone, we're going to remove the lacquer, which is in these yellow areas, by applying, it's a, it's a water-based paint stripper, basically, uh, friendly to the environment, may I add. Uh, and then once that's actually been removed, that will be removed by hand. Then when we've got it right back to what is bare metal, we will start to resurface the metal to remove the graffiti and any other marks on it. The emphasis is going to be on minimum intervention. We want to remove as little of the original metalwork as possible while getting rid of all this graffiti which has etched its way into the surface. The process that they're carrying out at the moment is the removal of the lacquer. 
The green on the surface there is a water-based varnish remover, which has been on the surface for around 36 hours. Um, we're just scraping it off the surface now and it should be taking 99% uh, of the lacquer with it. And then after this process has been carried out, we'll steam clean the surface. They're all unique. There might be three of these in the world, but uh, there's only one in London. And they've all got different surface coatings. They've all been put out here at different times and different conditions. Well, it's very exciting um, to see what's being revealed beneath and beginning to get an idea of the, the colours that um, it will end up with. Um, but also, um, you can see the challenge ahead. So you're never really sure what you're going to find underneath. As you can see already, there's quite a marked difference between the area that hasn't been worked on and the area that has. You're starting to get that luscious luster uh, of the original patina that Henry Moore intended. I'm hoping that when the hoarding comes down, people will be actually really quite surprised as to how the sculpture looks. Uh, striking, the uh, hopefully very lush, and people will be sort of shocked in some way. This work really is quite iconic, I think, within this area of Parliament. Everybody is aware of this sculpture, and to an extent it's become part of the landscape, but I think once it's been conserved, people will be very, not, you know, very positively surprised and will hopefully start to really appreciate what they've got here. was originally gifted to the nation by Henry Moore. He wanted uh, many of his sculptures to have, a, to have an appropriate background and for this sculpture he thought the Houses of Parliament was an appropriate background. It's in two parts. There was a gap in between where you could see the Houses of Parliament and that has given a different view of Parliament for anyone who, who's interested to see it. It's been a backdrop in hundreds of interviews of politicians on this very site uh, and uh, for all sorts of reasons it's, uh, it's a very important piece now for us and we are delighted and very happy to have it in the collection. This is wonderful isn't it, the view? And the, the view, the, the, the view in, in between is fantastic. Yeah, I mean a, the, the sculpture is about that, the space between two forms. Yeah. A patina is a, a, a chemical alteration of the surface which we can create colour from and once that's done you can seal it either in the coat using a lacquer which was done before or in our case now we're going to seal it with a wax. The patination process is a, a chemical process that all sculptures go through um, after they've been cast in the foundry and you apply chemicals to the surface and you can create a whole range of colours from blacks to greens to blues to whites. In the case of, of more sculptures they have a very pale patina with some darker areas and that is done usually using heat um, and cold patina applications. The time it takes is very difficult to judge and that's why we had to allow in this project an adequate time to create this surface. The one thing that more sculptures, particularly these ones that were taken from bones and fossils and pieces of chalk, are that he wanted to get that mixture of texture from smooth surfaces to rougher, less reflective surfaces. And he did that not only by working the surface to give that, but also he then patinaed and coloured the surfaces so they, that accentuated the difference. What I'm doing at the moment is applying a very weak solution of ferric nitrate, which when the bronze is heated, gives these very subtle burnt sienna colours to the surface. It's with a patina like this that's so thin, you really need to apply a little bit at a time. When I've finished, this yellow colour will have a subtle orange tinge to it, which just gives a little bit more warmth to the, uh, to the surface of the bronze. The good thing about it as well is it will hide some of these marks in the surface from when the piece was cast. 
What we're aiming to achieve uh, when we complete the job is to get life back into the sculpture. More sculptures, because they're a mixture of this tooled surface and the, the smoother surfaces, it's all to do with the play of light. And so that is what we need to achieve when we finish. And I'm sure now we, we, will, we will get there. By the end of next week, it'll be very good, I think. Wonderful to see it because it was looking very sad. Some of the patination had gone. There were there was graffiti on it. It, it looked very sad and sorry for itself. And uh, the the team has been tremendous, uh, and we've seen a huge difference already. And we could, we're beginning to see what it what the, the vision that, uh, that that Henry Moore had for this site and for his sculpture. By dividing a form into two or more parts, you relate it more closely to landscape. So you have the cliffs and valleys and chasms, in this case, that you might find uh, in nature. And of course, his work comes from natural objects. The knife edge refers to this part of the sculpture where the form comes to a very fine blade. And that sharpness derives from the edges of bones, in this case, particularly the bones of birds. Moore really liked the fact that with bones you have very solid forms but also very fine edges and so there's that contrast between a very elegant line and a, almost a fragility but also a real toughness in the material. This is, sculpture is one of a family of forms that come in different sizes. Um, it's typical of Moore's work of the first half of the 1960s which you know, famously uh, are based on organic forms that he finds in the landscape. So in a way it's kind of archetypal of Moore's practice at the peak of his career when he's being commissioned to make or position sculptures in prominent places all over the world. What's unusual here is this strange dialogue between these sort of beautiful natural curves of, of his stones and bones and the, and the sort of the, the gothic decoration of the palace opposite. Abingdon Green is a key location right next door to the Houses of Parliament and for decades it's where interviews have taken place, it's been the backdrop for life in Parliament and here we are next to the Henry Moore statue uh, which has stood central, it's been there over that 45 year period and has witnessed the many comings and goings. We're now at the waxing stage, which is after we've patinaed the bronze, we give it a wax coating which protects it from the elements. The idea is it will stay this colour instead of deteriorating. The challenges of a piece like this is the variation in surface. You have the very smooth areas which are the trickiest to work on. They're less forgiving than the rough textured areas that you might get with more historic bronzes. It's got a very contemporary, well, modern finish, you would say, with lots of varying colours which are quite challenging to achieve. The colour is beautiful, it is absolutely as it should be. The tones between dark and light and highlighting um, certain areas that project and darkening you know, the, um, the crevices is exactly what Moore would have wanted. I hope now it's in the condition it was supposed to be. People will you know, see it again. We become very kind of complacent and blind to the things that are around us and you know, as you walk through uh, London or travel through on the top of a bus. There are fantastic works of art, so a number of them by Henry Moore, all over the city. And you know, anything we can do to make people more conscious that art is you know, actually a part of their everyday life without them realising it, is the better. The most satisfying thing about working on a sculpture like this is the transformation. When you look at the pictures from before and how it was so badly vandalised and it had all the inappropriate coatings on. And then you can look at it now and it's as good as what you might find in a museum, which is really satisfying. Because it's just been restored and it looks 
absolutely superb. People will see it fresh anew.